Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is July 30th, 1945, and the title is Jane's Jewels. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go, big fellow. Dan Reed and Tonto had been in the saddle for several hours since leaving their camp at sunrise. They were on the way to meet the Lone Ranger when they reined up in Thompson's corner. Oh, look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. Watering trough in front of Jackson's store. Well, it's a good place to water horses, Dan. Tonto, that looks like a good store. Is there anything we need? No. We don't need anything there. I'll ask the man on the steps if we have much farther to go. Uh, ask him how far to Potter Creek. All right, Tonto. What's that you're aiming to ask me, young fellow? You know how far it is to Potter's Creek? Well, it depends on what you ride. Two or three hours on a good horse. Two or three days on my stubborn old mule. You were uh, going there? Yeah. The government shut down the post office here last month. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Weren't worthwhile running it. Ain't nothing but a handful of permanent citizens. The rest are desert rats and drifters. Try their luck in the gold hills and then shove on. I see. Makes it hard for me. I'm postmaster here in the corners. I have to handle what mail comes for the folks at the creek. Say, you look like an honest young gent. Oh, thanks. You can save me a trip to the creek if you're a minder. Now, there's been a package here for the past week. Maybe you take it with you. Well, I don't it's know where... It's a small one. I've got it right inside the door. Come all the way from Chicago, so it must be important. I step right inside my store. Yep, here it is. Small, but it's mighty well boxed. Oh, I can put it in my pocket. Sure you can. I'll be mighty obliged. Can you read the name on it? Um, Jane Weatherby. That's right. You know Miss Jane? No, I've never been in Potter's Creek. Well, you won't have no trouble finding her. She's plump and rosy-cheeked. 
Looks to be about 40. I'll try to find it. You'll uh, most likely find it at the Conway Brothers' house. She goes there afternoons to clean up the place and cook a meal. You know the Conways? No. Well, they're a couple of stove in Ogaloots. They've been panning the creek for a good many years. <laughs> Guess they saved up a tidy sum by this time. You just ask anyone where John and Jacob live. They'll tell you how to find the shack near the creek. All right, I guess I can find it. Mind you, take good care of that package. Might be something down the right side of it. This must be where the Conway brothers live, don't you think, Tano? There's no other house near creek. Hey, here comes two old fellas. Yes, I see them. They come from downstream. You two looking for us? Uh, you looking for John and Jacob Conway? Not exactly. Yeah, why are you stopping before our house? Are you Mr. Conway? I'm one. This the other. I'm John. He's Jacob. Yeah, that's right. I'm Jacob. He's John. I'm glad to know you. My name's Stan Reed, and this is Tonto. Oh. Any reason why we should get acquainted? We was at the creek. We seen you rain up here and stare at our house. What do you want? I have some mail for Miss Jane Weatherby. I was told I could find her at your place. What? Mail? Where from? Let's see it. It's from Chicago. Here it is. <laughs> Small, ain't it? Now, who'd send her something from Chicago? Hmm? Ah, it's from a big store in Chicago. Well, I'd better go and tell Jane to come out here. Hey, now, you stay right here and keep an eye on these two, John. I'll go get her. What's the matter with you keeping an eye on them? Your eyes as good as mine. What are you, John? You appear to let me speak to Jane when you ain't around? My idea to call her? Well, we can call from here without going to the house. Uh, looks to me like it's you that's afraid to let anyone speak to Jane alone. Uh, uh, Jane? Hey, Jane? Are you calling me? Come on out here a second. There's mail for you. Mail? Oh, merciful goodness. Here she comes, fluttering like a gadfly. I'd like to know who'd send her a package from a big store in Chicago. Did you say there was mail for me? Oh, my sake, I can't believe it. Here you are, Miss Weatherby. Package? Oh, my soul, let me open it. Let me open it this instant. Uh, we ain't stopping you. Uh, we ought to save that paper. King dollars to save. Oh, you dropped something. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, what a simply beautiful box. Uh, what's inside the box? Oh, so silly. <gasps> Look, a necklace. Wow, oh, that's right. Jesus. Indeed. Them sure is pretty. Master Costa, he bought me. But who sent them to me? Oh, dear. I, I just know there's been a mistake. Here's the note that fell out of the package, Miss Jane. Oh, yes. Perhaps that will explain. Uh, <clears throat> what's it say? Uh, who's it from? I'll read it to you. Dear Miss Weatherby. We have been instructed to advise you that the enclosed jewel necklace is the gift of an admirer who wishes to be known as... Well, well, who's it from? Sakes alive, don't keep us waiting. It's Tom Bates, isn't it? He's the only one that throws cash around free and easy. Oh, John Conway, old darling. What? Well, you can't fool me. What are you talking about? You're the one sent this to me. What? Sir? No, no, Jane. Nothing of the sort. Where'd you get money to buy a jewel necklace? Well, I didn't. But this note says that the man wishes to be known as J.C. Yes. Well, them's your initials, Jacob. Huh? By thunder, I want to know where you got the cash to buy jewels. Jacob? <laughs> Why, I never knew you cared so much. Uh, now hold your horses. I didn't buy nothing from no one, John Conway. And you know darn well that you were... Don't you accuse me. Where would I get cash to buy jewels? Here. Well, you know where you could get gold dust to buy them. But, and so do you, you fibbing old goat. And I'm going to find out what the situation is right this moment. Well, you wait for me. You ain't the only one that's going to find out. Uh, what's the matter with them two? Why are they going to the house? I, I guess they're going to see if their gold has been disturbed. Gold? They've been panning the creek for a good many years. By hard work, they managed to get considerable gold from the stream. And they put the gold in little sacks and... When a sack is full, they drop it through a hole in the floor. Oh. They've been at it for more than ten years. Don't they ever take gold out of the hiding place? Oh, they'd starve before they touch it. That's the way it's always been. You see, they planned to leave the gold where it was until they got too old to work. Now each one thinks the other has stolen the gold. You think one of old fellows buy beads for you? I, I don't know what to think. 
I've been coming here afternoons to tidy the house for a long time. I like the old men, and they like me, but, well, it, it ain't like them to buy presents for me. Why don't you take your back home? It's something you like, you'll see them coming. Oh, golly. Oh, they're fighting. Mr. J. That old goat robbed me. Now he's trying to get out of it. You're the thief, John Conley, and you know it. Oh, please. Uh, Here, take the necklace and send it back and get the cash for it. That'll settle it. Nope, I'll send it my own way. Oh. Where's my gun? No, no. Oh, so now you're trying to kill her, huh? No, no. I'll show you. Let me take gun. Oh, let go. Nah. Oh, God, oh, goodness. Give me back, my shoot gun. Oh, going to shoot me, huh? Well, I'll lambaste you with this hunk of kindling. Oh, no, no. 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 Maybe an outsider stole the money. Oh, that ain't likely. Well, who knew gold was here? I guess nearly everyone knew about it. But no one knew where we kept it hid. You did? Yes, and so did you. For oh. sakes alive, I knew where you kept it hid. The chances are that the others knew it, too. Hey, right, then it is has got to be settled for keeps. That was my sentiment. <laughs> Where's them old dueling pistols? We'll fight it. Well, huh? if that's what you want, I'll accommodate you. Hey. I'll get the pistols. Oh, they really mean Sam, it. you go quick. Where's your man? Can't you find the guy? I won't find him. They're here somewhere. If you ain't stolen. Dan, you go get Lone Ranger. Right. I got him. Oh, mercy me. I'm going for the sheriff. Don't let him do it before the sheriff gets here. Come on, Victor. Dan Reed found the Lone Ranger in camp not far from town. He told about the jeweled necklace and the fight between the Conway brothers while the masked man saddled a big white horse named Silver. Boy, well, and Toto stayed there, aren't they? Yes. Steady, Silver. He'll keep him apart for the time being. I wonder if many people knew about the old man's gold. I guess so. Tighten the cinch, will you, Dan? Sure. Is there a chance that the men made a mistake in their count? I don't think so. They kept a tally by cutting notches on a table. Both John and Jacob are telling the truth. Someone's trying to frame them. If it's an outsider got at the gold, why didn't they take all of it? We'll join Toto. Ready, Dan? Yes. Steady, big fellow. Easy a minute. Get along, Victor. Tom Bates and several other men were in the sheriff's office when Jane Weatherby arrived. She told her story hurriedly and finished by handing the lawman the necklace. And here's the note that came with me. Now, wait a minute, Jane. Let me get this straight. Yes, sir. You say each of the old men thinks the other stole the money? Yes, and it's real serious. A crazy fool. Well, I don't think either of those men would steal from the other. Well, you never know, Hank. One of them is stuck on Miss Jane. Oh, uh, sure. That gold might as well be stolen. They never spent any of it. Keep still, Tom. Let me handle this. Uh, go ahead. Jane... I want you to tell me something straight. Yes, Sheriff, of course. Who knew where they hid that gold? Well, I don't know. Uh, you knew? Of course I did. I, I was at the house most every day. I... And you've always talked about <laughs> Who'd you tell about the hiding place? Well, I, I guess I told you, didn't I, Tom? Well, you never did. Well, I'm sure I must have. I probably mentioned it to Hank there when he was rooming at my room and house. Oh, I don't remember you telling me where it was hid. Well, I don't know what I told or who I told it to. That don't matter anyway, Sheriff. You've got to get to the house before they start shooting. I'll go right away. I'm going with you. Me too. You can keep us apart for now, mister. Same as that redskin did. We'll get the chance, though. And when we do, we'll have the duel. You bet we will. You two are making a great mistake. You can save your breath. We don't need a mass credit to tell us what to do. Isn't it possible that an outsider stole the gold? No. Not on your life. That old buzzard double-crossed his own brother. Why, you... Now, wait. <laughs> if an outsider did steal it, you're making it very easy for him. You realize that? <laughs> Someone's coming. I hear horses. Ah, uh, see him out that window. Keep these two away from weapons, Toto. Uh, you watch him. 
I see a sheriff's badge. Oh, dead rabbit. The sheriff won't tolerate no duel. No. Hey, look at the mask. Get him up. Oh, golly. Hold on, sheriff. Grab him, boys. We'll see what the mask man has to say about the stolen gold. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. tried to learn something about the gold that disappeared from the secret hiding place of the old Conway brothers, the sheriff burst in and shouted, Grab him, boys! We'll see what the masked man has to say about the stolen gold. Right. I'll stay where you are. Get back. Why, you... Go on, all of you. Take it easy now, sheriff. Take it easy. The masked critter don't know nothing about it. What's he doing here? Who is he? We don't know. Seems to be a friend of the Redskins. Well, who's the idiot? Uh, dead, Bernard Can't we have a private row without everyone busting in? That's a fast, rich man, my brother, that's all. Ain't no one else concerned. That's right. Take that boy and the red skin and the masked man and clear out. We'll settle things. One of us has got to go. We, uh, we aim to let the fates decide. Me and what? We're going to have a duel. Like fun you are. We are. And there ain't no one can stop us. We'll have it sooner or we'll have it later. Yes. Might as well let him have it, Sheriff. You keep out of this, Tom. All right. Seems to me the only thing to do is to throw both of you in jail. On what charges? You got nothing to jug us for. Uh, take our old dueling pistols away from that redskin. Leave him here and get. Will you do that, Sheriff? No. Why don't you? <laughs> they couldn't do much harm with those old pistols. Tom, it seems to me you're mighty anxious to have a duel. After all, it's their own affair. Well, can't you persuade that masked man to put his guns away? I think these two should do. That's but... right. You've got nothing to say. They'll do. They won't use dueling guns like those old collector's pieces they've counted on. No use having a duel unless there's a decisive result. A decisive result? Yeah. I have a pair of mesh guns. Yeah, you sure have. If they use these... Stop that! Oh, my safe! They'll give fate a big hand in making a decision. I won't tolerate a duel. Not for you to say, Sheriff. John, are you determined to fight your brother? Yes, uh... Well, them's awful big guns. Changed uh, your mind, huh? Turning yellow. No such thing. I'll fight you. Sheriff, you stay here. The rest of you, clear out. Clear out? Hey, we want to see this. The sheriff is to be the only witness. John, I'll be your second. I'll be Jacob. Right. There'll be no seconds other than the sheriff and myself. Now, get out. Now, yeah, hold on. I ain't agreed to you let have you have no choice, him. sheriff. Better disarm him, Tonto. He might make a play for his gun. Uh, hold on. I hate Are you going time. willingly or should I'm I start? I didn't. I didn't. Don't wait that cannon at me. Come on. All right. Get your horses and go back to town. Don't hang around here. Now, look here, mister. Sheriff, I don't... Sheriff, before you say more, please listen to me. the masked men had dominated the sheriff, swept through the town like wildfire. Tom, Hank, and the other men wore looks of bewilderment. Jane Weatherby wrung her hands in despair. Oh, it's awful. It's terrible, those poor old men. A few men mounted their horses and rode out in the hope of finding the scene of the duel, but soon returned without success. As the afternoon waned, 
People gathered in the center of town in the hope that the sheriff would return with news. Finally, the lawman rode into view. Oh, here comes the sheriff. Look at how he's riding. It's tragic news. I just know it is. He's got his head down on his chest. Oh, dear, he was such a lovable old man. I wonder which one survived. Well, just about kill a man there, eh, to shoot one of them guns. Well, gosh, the next size biggest comes on wheels. Oh, 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 oh Sheriff, man. let's have the worst. Well, let me get off my horse. Is it over with, Sheriff? Yeah, which one of them got it? Steady there, folks, one at a time. Take it easy. I'll tell you all about it. Did they shoot it out, Sheriff? Could you hear the shots? No. Well, there was two shots fired. Maybe the wind didn't blow right so you could hear them. Uh, it's sad, folks. Downright sad. Oh. Sheriff, which one? Uh, both. Both? Oh. Well, of all things. They fired at just the same time. I reckon I did all I could, though. You men saw how that masked man took care of things. Oh. Sheriff, will we have a chance to see the remains? Well, they can't be seen just yet. I'll pay for the funeral. That's what I'll do. Tom, they won't be needing your money. Sheriff, uh... What about the things at their house? We locked the house when we left, Jane. I reckon it'll be best that we leave things just as they are for the time being. Maybe so. You and me will go there tomorrow and put things right. Well, I'll be glad to help, and so will I. Well, I do hope that one of them was the thief. It'd be a terrible thing if an outsider was guilty. A terrible, terrible thing. What became of the mask man, Sheriff? Oh, he let me go as soon as the shooting was done. I'd like to know what business it was of his. Well, folks, I'm going to my office. I want to be alone for a little while. If any of you see the coroner, ask him to drop in. That evening, Jane Weatherby sat beneath a tree in the rear of her home. Her eyes were red from crying, and her handkerchief was moist. She didn't hear anyone approach and wasn't aware of Tonto until he spoke. Uh, miss. Oh, oh mercy, you, you frightened oh, me. Oh, you not be afraid. Oh, no. No, I'm not afraid. But you, you come this way. Where to? You come with me. Let me show you. I, I wanted to stay here. I thought maybe the coroner would bring those poor old men into his office and... Oh, him not bring him tonight. You come with Tonto. Maybe you see him. Oh, all right. Later the same evening, while darkness shrouded the silent cabin where the two old men had lived, a stealthy figure crept through the night. The feet of Tom Bates made little sound as he approached the rear door. The key he carried turned the lock on the door. He was inside the building. Then he knelt and felt the rough floorboards in the darkness. Now to find the right one. Fourth from the edge. One, two, three. Four. And this should be the one. Loose. I hope someone hasn't beat me to it. <laughs> they haven't. Don't do the old man any good now. Tom stuffed the small gold hill sacks in his pocket. And then replaced the floorboard. the old men kept their cash beneath the floor. Well, what about it? That's how you knew where to find it. You're the one that stole that gold. <laughs> you must be crazy. Oh, no, I'm not. 
You know all about buying things from Chicago. You get plenty of fancy clothes from there. You had the jewels sent to me, and you just did it to stir up trouble between John and Jacob. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. You stole some of their gold. Then you ordered some cheap imitation jewels for me, so each of the men would accuse the other. Uh, I'd better close this door. You were the one that thought it was a good idea for those two to fight a duel. If one was killed, the other one would be satisfied that the theft had been solved. You stole that gold. Now, look, Jane, don't be a fool. You can't prove any such thing. I know what I saw. I was outside that window not two minutes ago. I saw you put the rest of the gold sacks in that dresser drawer. Why, you... You keep your hands off me. You snoopy oh, old woman. stop. I'll show you what happens to meddlers. Stole from her. Master. Hands off. Good for you, Jane. You did it just right. What is this? As far as you're concerned, it's an arrest. Put the cuffs on him, Sheriff. Better I will. How much gold in the drawer, Miss Jane? All right. This is a frame-up. Maybe so, but you're right in the middle of the frame. There's 11 sacks full, and one half full. It's nearly all here. Good. Your plans were good, Tom, but uh, there was just one thing you didn't count on. Yeah? Yes. You didn't count on both of the men being killed. When that happened, you thought of the gold that remained beneath the floor. You thought that you could safely take that. Now, I'll have my say. Sheriff, you can put me on trial, but you'll find yourself in trouble up to the neck. What'll the court say when it comes out that you helped stage a duel? A circuit judge will do something about that. Thunderation, there wasn't a duel. What? We ain't gonna wait no longer. John. Let's see what gold is left for us. Jacob. There's your gold. Those gold stuff darn near caused trouble between us. And good have to use for it. They used to have. Me neither. This whole thing was a frame-up. You bet it was. From the time the masked man chased everyone away so he could talk to the sheriff. They lied to us, Sheriff. You made us think they were both killed. Don't call me a liar, Tom. If you think back... You'll see that I didn't say either of the two had been shot. I said they both fired shots, and that was true. So we waited at the house to see if anyone would show up. And we watched from the time you used that extra key to unlock the door. Well, get out of here now. You're heading for jail. And you two take your golden wand home. No more fighting. Yeah. Well, come on, Jacob. We've got to find a new hiding place for the gold. Hiding place, my eye. <laughs> Let's keep her out and spend it for a change. <laughs> Well, I would sort of like some of them fancy clothes that's in the catalog. And some fancy buttons for my vest. Oh, and some real jewels for Jane. Now you're talking sense. Hey, wait, wait a minute, Sheriff, before you take that critter out. Huh? Next to Jacob here, you're the most stubborn cuss I know. Huh? Now, why did you let that masked man have his way? You saw his gun. Hmm. You're too stubborn to be moved by guns. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, John... There is another reason why I listen to him. Ah, I knew it. I'll uh, tell you confidential who he is. He's the Lone Ranger. Thank <laughs> you.
story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.